wonderful. It's great to see every single one of you. Wow. Welcome to day number two of our week of revival. It's great to see you. Here in person, help me. First reach out to three or five people around you. It's our culture to welcome somebody. And so take a moment, get to know their name. Get to know their name. Come and reach out to five people. Say, my name is, my name is. Get to know your neighbor, your brother or sister and make them feel very, very, very welcome. Uh, it's such a joy to see every single one of you. Again, welcome to day number two of our Revival Week. We believe that we're going to have an awesome time in the presence of God. But let's take a moment now and give a big clap to our church family joining us online as well. Wonderful. We know that some of you are making your way here. Some of you probably stuck at work or in traffic, but wherever you're joining us from, here in Uganda, all around the world, you are welcome. Man, last night was absolutely amazing as we spent time in the presence of Jesus. And it was about returning. It was about recommitting ourselves to God. It was about offering every area of our lives to God. And you know what? That is where revival begins. Revival breaks out when people choose to offer themselves fully to God. And I want you to know, my brother, my sister, here in person joining us online, there is no limit to what God will do with a life that's totally surrendered to Him. When you offer yourself to God, you will experience the power and presence of God like never before. And as we pray this year, awesome God, do it again. He's going to do it through lives that are totally surrendered. And so 2024 is going to be a year of revival in Jesus' name. It'll be a year of revival. You know, in Acts chapter 3, after miracle had just happened, a layman had just been healed. Peter took that opportunity to say something so significant to the onlookers on that day. He didn't draw attention to himself, but he pointed their attention to something so critical. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, after the miracle happened, and he told them about Jesus, he said to them, repent. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. When we offer ourselves to God, revival will break out. It'll break out in our families. It'll break out in our universities. It'll break out in our communities. It'll break out our places of work. And so as we come this evening, come and say, God, I give myself fully to you. I want to experience you like never before. This is more than just a revival service. This is an opportunity for us to encounter God. So will you lift up your hands right where you are and just tell him, Lord, today I am here to meet with you. I offer myself to you. Come and take the next 30 seconds, do that. And then we're going to commit this evening into his hands and ask him to do what only he can do. Jesus, as the Watoto family, on this second day of our revival week, we let go of anything that would get between you and us today. We're letting go of anything in our minds and anything in our hearts, anything in our lives that will stop us from experiencing the full measure of your presence and power. We are here to meet with you. 
We are here to encounter you. And we know that when we give ourselves fully to you, when we offer our lives to you, times of refreshing will come and times of revival will come. Revival will break out like the noonday sun and our lives will never be the same. Our families will never be the same. Our city will never be the same. Our nation will never be the same. So today we say to you, Abba Father, have your way. We are ready for you to do what you want to do. We give you all the glory and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus in worship. Come on, put those hands together. If you can't join this place, put those hands together. All we say. We sit together. This is the day you made. So I rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad in it. This is where I believe. That you are more than enough, you're more than enough for me. We declare, sing. You are faithful to your promise, you are strong when I am weak. When I'm standing in your presence, I have everything I need. Come on, sing. The joy of the Lord, the joy of
Rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Has the Lord been good to you? Would you just raise those hands and just worship Him right now? If He has been good to you, if He has been faithful, come on, worship Him. Has it been good to you? Yes, he has. Given all things to you. Yes, he has. In the moments when you're doubting, he's been there too. Has it been good? Yes, Come on, lift your voice. For all of my days, I will sing out your praise. You have been so good, been so good. Oh, I still love By your mercy and grace, you have been so
to remembrance the faithfulness of God. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Right now, will you just raise up your hand and begin to thank God for his faithfulness, for how he has shown up for you, for how he has never let you down, for how he has forgiven your sins and healed your diseases and provided for everything that you need. Come on, lift up your voice right now.
Hallelujah. I want us to sing that chorus with no instrument. Imbithi, can you come? Come back and just sing that chorus. All my life, you have been faithful. If you know God has been faithful to you, you sing it out as expression of your gratitude to God for his goodness to you. If you know God has been faithful to you, if you have experienced the love of God, if you know where God has brought you from, if you know what God has done for you, if you know what God has done in your life and for your life, then you ought to give him thanks. Let thanks flow out of our hearts to him tonight. Let gratitude flow out of our hearts to our God who is forever faithful, who is forever good and compassionate and kind. So let's sing that chorus with no instrument. All my life you have been faithful. up your voice. Express your thanks to God right now. Come and express your gratitude to God for His faithfulness, for His goodness, for His kindness, for His mercy. Come on, for His grace, for His power at work in your life, at work in your family, at work at your workplace, at work in your school. Let's praise Him. Because he is good. Let's praise him because he's faithful. Let's praise him because he is God. He never changes. He is God. He is the miracle worker. He is God. The healer. He is God. The freedom giver. He is God. The hope giver. He is God. The life giver. He is God. Our provider. He is God. Our guide. He is God. Our leader. He is God. Our defender. He is God. Our protection. He is God. Our refuge. He is God. Our fortress. He is God. Our shield. He is God. He is for us. And He is with us. He is for you and with you. He is not against you. What shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? What shall separate us from the goodness of God, from the faithfulness of God? Is there anything in the past? Is there anything in, in the present? Is there anything in future? Is it trouble? Is it challenges? Is it mountains before us? Is it sickness? Is it tragedy? Is it death? Nothing shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Who is like our God? He's the one who fights our battles. He fought our battles in the past. And you're fighting our battles today. And you'll fight our battles tomorrow. That's why we give you thanks. You have never let us down. You are not letting us down. And you'll never let us down. You have never forsaken us. You will not forsake us. You will never forsake us. We are not on our own. 
You are with us. So we praise you with another hand clap of thanksgiving. Come everybody one more time. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give Jesus a big hand. If he has been good, give your neighbor a high five and welcome them to church. All of you who are online and on air, you can give yourselves a high five too. Thank you. Welcome to day two of our time with God. And we're waiting on God in a very, very special time this season of Easter as we think about, as we wait on, on Him, but also as we meditate and think about this amazing season where Jesus Christ gave His life for us. So I want to share a portion of Scripture and uh, just talk a bit and encourage us uh, as, as, as God has been encouraging me, and, and then we'll just get into prayer this evening and allow God to do some amazing things in our lives. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your presence. Lord, would you speak to us? Would you encourage us? Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. We know you are already here. We welcome you, God. Would you speak to us, customize this word, for each one of us individually, you know where we are on our journey with you. God, I ask that you'll encourage us, that you challenge us, that you stir us up in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you honor. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My name is Kenneth. I am blessed to be one of the pastors here at Radoto Church and specifically in charge of the marketplace uh, ministry. It's an honor to just speak to you this evening about just some, some things that God's been stirring on my heart. Uh, I don't know about you, but this year has been awesome. <laughs> already. Uh, already. I tell you, the, the theme was from the Lord. Hallelujah. Awesome God. And, and uh, yeah, do it again. And even when we start talking about that, I feel like getting into it. But no, no, no. We don't want to get into that. That theme is just from the Lord. But uh, one of the things that just blessed me this year was our time of fasting and prayer. Anybody enjoyed that? That was amazing, amazing, uh, amazing. And uh, the, the thing that really I want to share came from that uh, for me. And I felt like at the end of that season of fasting and prayer, uh, it was so good we didn't want to stop. I don't know about you, but me, I didn't want to stop. Uh, I didn't want to stop. There was 24 hours prayer online. You guy, that was just awesome, <laughs> awesome. And the best parts were when you'd get on and find people speaking the native language, okay? I love the part uh, when the guys from uh, Laminadera, the mothers were praying. I didn't get anything, but it was just on point. <laughs> on point, uh, on point. There some amazing times. But as we... Uh, ended that season, I remember just going into a place of, of time of prayer of God, okay, now what? what? What are you saying? You know, we have ended this season, now what? What do you want us to do? And I, I, I felt that because sometimes when we finish such, uh, if you've been saved for a long time, this thing happens to you. So if you've done a fast, usually at the end of that fast, you kind of get into an easy moment. You know, it's like, man, I did it, you know? I, I tell you, you know, I'm saying the truth, right? You know, I, I have fast. that next day you eat, you chill, you relax, you know. The terrible thing is most times that's the time you say, let me now go and watch that series. Okay? Binge on a movie or something. And uh, I, I really felt like, no, I don't want to do anything like that. So I just kept praying, God, what do you want us to do? What is it? And, um, and God just reminded me of the story of Esther. And if you know the story of Esther, really it's the story of Easter. And I know, you know, the play of words, but it is. In many ways, I could see Jesus Christ and this season in that story. And, and uh, for, for example, if, if you know that Haman uh, plotted against the children of Israel and went to the extent of going to the king and coming up with this edict to destroy 
the children of Israel. And the king allowed it, signed it into law. Now, at the time, the, 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 the laws of the Medes and Persians could not be, even if the king thought, eh, I made a mistake, he couldn't undo what he had done. He was bound by the law he had made. You know, when Adam sinned, when Adam and Eve sinned, because of God's justice, sin had to be punished. God, even if God loved us, he couldn't say, no, let me undo this situation. He could not. <laughs> He couldn't just say, no, we will not punish people. They had to still be punished. Mordecai, Esther's uncle, came to Esther and said, listen, you, you have been chosen as queen for such a time as this. And for that, that call was a call to Esther to go and almost sacrifice her life. According to, again, the laws of the Medes and Persians, if you came before the king without him calling you, it was a death sentence. So by the time Esther went, she took a time of fasting and, and when she went, really she had given up her life. She had laid down her life for her people just like Jesus did for us. And so when she came and we know the story that she went into the king's presence and the king, by the grace of God, oh, you know, he had mercy on her and lifted his scepter and she received life and because of that she was hard. And when she was heard, she, you know the story, over time she explained what was happening and the king was enraged. The king was enraged that someone could plot to kill a, the people of her queen, of his queen. And then he wrote an edict again to Esther and said, you can defend yourself. I am unable to remove the first law, but I am writing a new one that you now can defend yourselves. And you have my support. Can I tell you something? When Jesus Christ went on the cross, there are certain things that he purchased for us. The Bible says that he defeated hell. He defeated Satan. Sin was broken. The sting of sin was destroyed. Now, therefore, you and I have no condemnation. The Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin for us so that now we could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So the Lord said something to me. He said, you know, you have taken a time of prayer and fasting. Yes, 40 days. And I have spoken. And how many of you got a word from the Lord in that season? Come on, be bold. Be bold, be bold. There's nothing wrong with hearing from the Lord. Some of you are like, they might say I'm a prophet. Don't worry. No one's going, no one's going to come to you and say, the word of from the Lord. What is the Lord saying? No. How many of you? you, you God answered some prayers. Let me tell you, I, I got testimonies, incredible testimonies in that season. There are things that God spoke to us. There are things that God stirred up in our hearts. There are things that he said that you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know it, they are true. This is what God said to me. He said, listen, Ken, the answer, the kind of response that I gave, the, that because you have come out of this season of fasting and prayer, I have given you favor. There are doors that have opened. In fact, one of the words God gave us was that uh, there's the scripture, I think it's in Corinthians, that uh, his, God was speaking, well, Paul was speaking to the, to the Corinthians. He says, there's an effectual door, a great and effectual door that's open to me. And I remember God saying that clearly to us, that there is a door that is going to open to each one of us. There are many words God gave us. And he said, I have spoken these things to you. Nevertheless, it is not going to be a season for you to chill. It's not. It's like the season of Esther. That though God had favored them, Esther had the king's backing. Mordecai could only walk around like he did because he had manipulated the king. But now Esther had the king's backing. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you, you have heaven's backing. The Bible declares, listen, in Colossians, that Every handwriting, all the things that were written against you, that were written against you, by the blood of Jesus, they were wiped away. You have authority to walk into the presence of God. You have that authority. But the challenge for me was this, and this is the challenge I want to pass on to you. That just like the time of Esther, Esther had to arise and act. 
I believe that God is calling us as believers to come out of that situation or that phase or mindset where we sit back and think, I prayed, now God is going to act. No, he has called us now to also arise and act. Act. You know, there are many prophetic words that were written about Jesus coming and delivering. There were many, there were many, many, many. Over 300 scriptures have been written about Christ coming and his delivering of the children of Israel. Nothing happened until Jesus Christ physically came and died physically on the cross. Esther could have stayed and stayed and prayed and shandered. And... It took Esther believing God prayed, yes, fasted, yes, but Esther arose and walked into almost death. Friends, they, we, in the area of the spiritual realm, we have worked, praise the Lord, but God is now calling us to do some physical working, praise the Lord, to arise and take that resume, to arise if you have a problem at home, Get up and fix it. If there's someone to apologize to, get up and apologize to them. If there is an action that God start up during this fast, it's not time to say, now God is going to do it. No. The Bible says that it is impossible to please God without. But then the Bible also says, faith without works is. Where are you in that equation? We need a revival of action. The children of Israel standing right at the, at, the, at the boundary of the Jordan. Prayed and prayed and prayed. God opened. <laughs> and God said, put your feet in the river. It is a very unwise thing to do. Okay? To test water with both feet. Very unwise. But ladies and gentlemen, God is calling us. And this is what he said to me. He said, listen. Yes, I have given you. Can I, do you know that the devil is still alive? The cross did not kill the devil. You know. But the power was shifted. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now I give it to you. But do you know, you can have 240 or 50, I don't know what the exact one is, volts in your socket. Until you plug in, you will never know or have power. Until you switch on that light, there has to be an action for there to be a reaction. <laughs> I love what... Seven... Chapter 9, chapter 20, the Bible says they arose. But now they arose with authority. They arose with the favor of the king. Friends, I want to tell you something. After we have prayed, David came back from a, 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 a war. Came back home and found they had plundered the whole of their family and looted them. The Bible says that he was downcast. We ended 2023 downcast. There was so much attack. It was so bad. We opened 2024 in prayer and fasting. And like David, we went before the Lord and sought him and said, God, should we pursue or not? And God has spoken to you to pursue. <laughs> okay? He has given you certain instructions. If David had said, ah, God has said what? Pursue. And he just jumps from there. Pursue, pursue. Pass you, pass you, pass you. And then we started, pass you, pass you. Pass you, pass you, pass you. Eh, pa he would never have recovered all. Are you hearing me, friend? He would never have recovered all. Some of you 
God is speaking to you about certain things that need recovery and all you're doing is just shouting, enjoying the word, recover all. He said, recover. it is not enough. You need to arise and put some actions in place. There's a story in the Bible about these two lepers. Lep lepers. They had been besieged. They were Israelites, but they had been besieged. Now, lepers were always outside of the camp. So in the camp in Israel or in Jerusalem, wherever it was, people were dying of hunger. <laughs> this is the power of action. <laughs> dying of hunger. If they stayed where they were, they would also have died of hunger. And so they thought, this is what the Bible said, they thought among them, they said, if we go inside... It is sure we are going to die. If we stay, very, very sure we are going to die. But if we go, by some chance, there might be some help or deliverance. And because of their action, because of their action, they were the ones that brought the good news to the children of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, God is calling us to be people of what? Of action. James chapter 1, I want to read these scriptures and then we want to pray because I believe there are things that God is speaking to you. Math, I'll start from Matthew 5 verse 16. Let your light shine. Let means give permission to your light to shine. Before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. James 1 22. But prove yourself doers of the word and not mere, merely hearers who delude themselves. First John 3, 18, little children, let us not love with just word or with tongue, but in deed and in truth. I love Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, says, Therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ. And I have really been meditating on this. What does it mean to be an ambassador? An ambassador is someone who is... On duty all the time. <laughs> all the time. At whatever point you are representing, you are acting on behalf. God has called us to be ambassadors. I like these words. These are action words. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were making an appeal through us. Friends, if we don't act... The cross of Jesus, what he purchased for us, will be null and void. We will not taste the fruit of it. There has to be action. Even in the simplest form, and this is not the simplest form, but even in salvation, you must believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. <laughs> there has to be an action. So I feel, sense in my heart, God is calling us to act. God is calling us to act. It is impossible to walk in deliverance if you keep going back to what you used to do. Some things need to break. Maybe it is people. There are things God has spoken to you at an individual level. Maybe it is the people that you're hanging out with and God is saying, break ties, move away from that place. You need to do it. There are certain things that God is speaking to you at an individual level. You see, I read a story this week. Some of us were there. Well, I am a child of God. I am believing God for work. You see, there are people, a young lady in India sent 540 a, a, uh, resumes or uh, applications. 540. She was an excellent student. She didn't have a, a mediocre degree, but she looked that's how much she looked for, 540. And because of that, she was able to enter into a, an, a, a premier uh, university. Today, they are showcasing what she has done in an invention. And then we look at it and say, hey, mama. No, it's not a hey, mama. Someone believed God, heard from the Lord, and then took an action. Sometimes the difference between you, where you are and a hey, mama is a simple Faith and action. What has God spoken to you in these 40 days, in this beginning of the year? 
What have you done about it? If you have not been faithful with that little, and there you are, you are here now telling God, scale, I want to grow. What have you done with the first thing he spoke to you about? God, ladies and gentlemen, is calling us to act. Listen to why. This for me, Hebrews 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 13. This is what it says. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled. Why are certain situations in our lives still in a disabled state? Inaction. Procrastination. Mindsets. You know, when we started this fast, I, I came before the Lord and said, God, what, how would you want me to fast? I'm not my own. So I don't want to go there with 40 days. Fast, dry fast. No. I said, God, what, how do you want me to do it? And I told God, you know, I, I could do this. I could do that. And then he asked me, Ken, is food really your problem? And clearly you can see it is not my problem. And, and I could sense in he, him asking me, is that going to really be a sacrifice? <laughs> I thought, no. So I said, God, what, what is it? Just put your finger on it. I'll let it go. And he said, I want you to fast in action. I want you to fast procrastination, laziness, not following through. Do you know, many times the reason why we are, we are carrying around situations that are lame, that are disabled, that are sick, that are in a state that needs help is because we have not disciplined ourselves. We've given our lives to Christ, but we are still walking in sin. We are still, because of this chillness, we have, God opened the door for work and we arrive late. In action. Our relationships are failing because we are not investing in them. But we keep coming back and saying, now God help me, now help. And he helps. And yet we know what to do. Do you know that the Bible says, James, he says this, that if you do, okay, or if you do not do what you know to be right, that is sin. If you don't do it and you know it's the right thing to do, it is sin. So today, I, I really feel challenged on my heart that we need to arise and pray and cry out and ask God to anoint us, ask for the infilling of the Holy Spirit because that he can give us the ability. You know, he says it in his word that he works in us both to will but also to do. That God will give us the, the unction to do, to get out of our lazy stupor and act in the name of Jesus. Some of us, we have a gift. We have gifts and they're just dormant there. We keep procrastinating. Yes, I will pick up that guitar. Yes, I will go to that universe. Yeah, I will. I will. But there is no action. God is calling us to a revival of action in Jesus' name. So I want us to stand. Let's arise on our feet. What is it? What has God spoken to you? What is it? At an individual level, who has he asked that you go and minister to and apologize to and witness to? What action has he given? What word has God spoken to you about? 
Some of you are sitting on the deliverance of people. <laughs> and because of fear, because of how people will see you, you are afraid. Friends, God is calling us to walk away from this fear of men and obey the living God and serve Him. Some of us, there are things God has said at a work level, a family level. He's called you to bring people together, to bring salvation, to bring the family in reconciliation. But you're saying, but how can I? You, you're, you're disqualifying yourself like Gideon and saying, but I am the least of the least of the least. God is calling you to act. In this time, this little time, I want us to speak those words. Recommit ourselves to the words that God has spoken to us. To a, an action, a plan, and say, God, I am going to do this. This is what I'm... If you don't have that plan, begin to ask God, Lord, show me now how. Give me the steps of what I need to do. Show me one, two, three things that I need to step up and do. Open my eyes. Help me. Because like Esther, as much as God has spoken, it's going to take us to arise and do something to see that deliverance that we are believing and hoping for. Would you raise your voice right now? Would you raise your voice? Would you raise your voice? At a personal level, maybe at a family level, there is something God spoke to you. Maybe it's at a ministry level. You're a cell leader. You're a section leader. And there's a strategy that God has given you, but you've just been procrastinating it. Maybe you're here and you're married or you're living together. And you've procrastinated making things right. But God's been nudging on your heart. Friend, God is calling us to act. Change in our lives is only going to come when we arise and do something about it. It's not going to come just by praying only. We need to get up and allow God to work through our actions. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Jesus. We need you, God. We thank you for the words that you speak to us. We thank you for the things that you entrust us with at a personal level, Lord. You take time. And you have written your plan in, in your hand concerning our lives. You have the blueprint concerning us <laughs> at an individual level, Lord. You have detailed out our life, our steps, Lord. And you take time to speak to us concerning these things, concerning the way that we should walk. We thank you, Lord, for that clarity. We thank you that you have spoken to us. Some of us, you have given us some amazing dreams, amazing visions. You have opened our eyes to see what you have in plan and in store for us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the plans that you have for us. Your word declares that they are good plans. They are plans to prosper us. They are plans to give us a future and an end that we hope for. We thank you for them, Lord. We thank you that you, have, you, you give your Holy Spirit to us and that he witnesses in our hearts that this is it, this is what you've called us to, this is where you want us to go, this is the direction you're giving us. Lord, you've called us as individuals to extend your kingdom through influence, through growth, through multiplication, wherever we are. And Lord, you're speaking to us, every single one of us. You've given us a word, you've spoken to us. But Lord, we have been inactive. We have been lazy, God. We have folded our hands and expected just things to fall from heaven or miracles to just happen. And yet, God, you have placed those miracles within reach of us. God, this evening, this night, online and in person, God, we are waiting on you. We are reaching out tonight. We are believing you again. We want to stir up that word. We want to stir up that word. We want to bring to remembrance that statement, that word that you gave to us. We want to bring to remembrance that declaration that you spoke over our lives. And God, today we want to declare that we, this thing is going to come to pass. That this word, we will see it in our day and in our time. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
not at an individual level. We are believing you, oh God. We are believing you. This is why you went on the cross. That we would be freed. That we would be delivered. That we would be set free to serve you. To serve you. To have influence. To see the goodness of the Lord in this land of the living. To see your impact, your influence in our day to day. So God, we believe you for it. We believe you for it. We bring to remembrance those words. We thank you for what you've spoken at an individual level. We thank you for what you've spoken to us at a, at a family level, Lord. You have called some of our families to have influence, to have growth. Oh Lord, to see deliverance, salvation in our homes. You have spoken concerning those things. And some of us have been passive and waiting somehow for salvation to come. But yet you have put the word on our tongue. You have given us the capacity to speak. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for those words concerning our families, concerning the areas of influence you have given to us as families. We thank you for work. Lord, this area of economics, whether it's in employment, there are things you're speaking to us at individual level. But God, we've been shy about it. Whether it's just a mindset issue, we have been shy. God, we are believing you. We are believing you for traction in this next quarter of the year. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, this is why you went on the cross. Your word declares that this is why Jesus was, was brought forward to destroy the works of Satan. That you and I might become free to serve God. To serve God. Lord, we thank you for the words that you're speaking to us concerning our communities, concerning our nation, oh God. We believe you for them, God. We believe you for them, Lord. We believe you for them, God. Lord, some of these words are too big. <laughs> when we think about them, we are shaken to the core. But God, that is why you said that you will leave us with the Holy Spirit. That you will not leave us as orphans. That you will send the helper. You will send him to us. And so God, this evening we wait on you for your Holy Spirit. We wait on you for empowerment. We wait on you for him who is our comforter. Who comes alongside us. In the mighty name of Jesus. We wait on you for help, Lord. We wait on you for help. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We wait on you, Jesus. We wait on you, Jesus. We want to take the next few minutes to welcome Holy Spirit. We welcome Holy Spirit. The disciples had an incredible task before them. Jesus had given them a commission, a mandate that was beyond their capacity. And I'm sure as he went, they must have thought, where do we start? And he said, listen, do not do anything. Do not go until he comes. We need Holy Spirit. We need his guidance. We need his leading. We need him to show us how and what to do. To be strategic in our actions. To have divine encounters, divine assistance in the things that God has given us to do. So we're going to sing. We're going to take a moment to worship the Lord. And as we worship the Lord, welcome Holy Spirit. Welcome Holy Spirit at an individual level. Individual level. He is present. He is near. <laughs> Luke tells us that if our fathers who are evil, when we ask them for bread, they don't give us stones. When we ask them for fish, they don't give us a serpent. He says, how much more our Father in heaven? will give the Holy Spirit to us. Some of us, when we think about the things God has spoke, spoken to us, we coil. And it's very evident. Peter feared to stand with Jesus. He was afraid. He said, ah, I don't know him. But after the Holy Spirit came, this same, Jesus, this same Peter stood up boldly and declared the gospel of Jesus Christ, still with the threat of death, we need that kind of boldness to fulfill God's purpose for our lives. To come out of a passivity to an action-oriented lifestyle. Faith-based lifestyle. 
So I want to invite you, as we worship God, as we take time, welcome Holy Spirit. Invite Him into your life. Ask for an infilling in Jesus' name. Spirit, you are welcoming. Holy Spirit, you are welcoming. Let your power burn like fire. Holy Spirit, you are welcoming. Holy Spirit.
Come on, let's just go ahead and ask the Holy Spirit to fill our lives this afternoon, this evening. Let's go ahead and open up our hearts to Him and just say, fill me up afresh, Holy Spirit. Welcome into my life. Welcome into my heart. I need you, Holy Spirit. Let me experience you in a brand new way. Fill me up again. Go ahead. Have a moment with God. Have a moment with God. Have a moment with God. He is the promise of the Father. The Holy Spirit is available to all who believe, to all who believe, to all who believe. Fill us up, O oh God. Fill us up, O oh God. Fill us up, O oh God. Fill us up, O oh God.
Holy Spirit, we need you. And yes, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. I just want to encourage us from some portions of Scripture. Pastor Ken has just been encouraging us and stirring us on to action. There is a kind of life that God has called every believer to live. A life that is effective, a life that is powerful, a life that is productive, a life that witnesses for Christ. This is what the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. There is no way we can ever live this life without the help of the Holy Spirit. We will not be effective. We shall fail. And there are three primary sources of resistance against us as believers. First one is Satan, the devil, and his demons. And no wonder the Bible tells us that our adversary, the devil, roams around like a roaring lion looking for whom he may devour. Second source is the system of this world that we live in. And the Bible tells us we are in this world, but we are not of this world. And finally, the third source is the flesh, the fallen nature, which is constantly in conflict with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us to walk in the Spirit that we may not gratify the desires of the flesh in order for us to experience victory in the life that God has called us to live, we are going to have to depend on the Holy Spirit. We're going to have to rely on the Holy Spirit. And that is why it's important for us as believers to earnestly desire the Holy Spirit, to ask God for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, to pattern our lives in obedience to His leading. We cannot do it on our own. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. And that is why this evening we're spending some time to ask God to fill us up afresh. We're spending some time to declare that we need the Holy Spirit. And God has already poured out His Spirit upon all flesh. I want to encourage you, will you open up your heart and receive the Holy Spirit. Let's just close our eyes, bow our heads, and let's just focus on Jesus for a moment right now. As with everything, oh God, we stand before you as your children. Thank you for your faithfulness. You have promised that you will pour out your spirit on all flesh. And Lord, you've made available to everyone who believes the Holy Spirit. And so right now, as your children, as the body of Christ, we ask, will you fill us up afresh, O oh God? Fill us up with your Holy Spirit. Fill us up, O oh God. Baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Baptize us, O oh God. Immerse us and saturate us with the Holy Spirit. Every area of our lives, O oh God. Lord, start to feel your children this evening. Every single one who is here and those online. Fill them up, O oh God. That we may be empowered to live effective lives that witness of your greatness and your glory. Lord, we receive. We receive the Holy Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit right now. May you have your way, Holy Spirit. Walk in our lives. Walk in our hearts. And Father, may you be glorified through us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. As we continue to worship, let's continue asking for the Holy Spirit. There's nothing could ever come close nothing can compare your eye living home your presence Lord I've tasted and 
Holy Spirit, how we need you in our lives. Your presence, Lord, is all we need, all we need. Uh, Holy Spirit, we wait on you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. your spirit your Holy Spirit is in this place and we know that where you are there is freedom chains are broken disease is healed broken hearts are healed depression is gone in the name of Jesus that is who you are Lord Jesus you told us very clearly that the Spirit of the Lord is upon you to open the eyes of the blind, to set the captives free, to declare the year of the Lord's favor. Oh Lord, you're in this place. Lord, we are asking you, Holy Spirit, start to break chains right now in the name of Jesus. Break chains, break chains, break chains. Break them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, wherever anyone is bound in this place, start to break those chains right now in the name of Jesus. Chains of depression be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Darkness be broken right now in the name of Jesus. All kinds of unclean spirits be gone from this place in the mighty name of of Jesus the presence of the Lord is in this place and Satan you are not welcome all kinds of demonic spirits be gone in the mighty name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Lord set the captives free set the captives free right now oh God by the power of your presence the power of your Holy Spirit oh Lord do what only you can do set every captive free right now in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus. Lord, I know that there's some sick people in this place. You have been sick for a while and you've been wondering how this can be done. But right now, the presence of the Lord is in this place that to receive your healing right now. Wherever that pain is right now, just place your hand where that is and start to believe Him for that healing. In the name of Jesus, He is in this place. And by the power of His Holy Spirit, He will set you free right now. Receive that healing now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That anointing is flowing in this place and that anointing breaks yokes that anointing sets the captives free all disease can be healed in the mighty name of Jesus irrespective of what you receive from the doctor irrespective of what the doctor's report says nothing is impossible for our God and because his presence is in this place receive that healing right now in the name of Jesus from the top of your head down to the soles of your feet as that anointing flows through your body start to receive your healing right now by faith in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus he is in this place and he's doing his work he is setting you free right now he is setting you free right now he is healing you right now receive that healing now in the name of Jesus receive that healing now in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, He is touching you right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And it's not just healing you physically. He's not just healing you physically right now. He's also healing you emotionally. Your heart has been broken by someone that has messed up your life. 
you laid your heart before them and they have broken it well Jesus by the power of his Holy Spirit has the ability to take the broken pieces of your heart and mend them and put them together in the name of Jesus you have been depressed you have been broken and you are wondering where your help comes from well your help is coming from the Lord right now start to receive start to receive your healing now emotionally right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus oh God start to touch your people oh God oh Lord in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Holy Spirit may we feel your presence may we test your goodness in this place may we test your healing in this place oh God you're in this place thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord receive receive from him right now receive from him right now receive from him right now he's filling your heart with peace right now a peace that passes all understanding not like the kind that the world gives us but the kind that comes from God himself and so he's filling your heart with peace receive that peace now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, the some of you in this place that have been under a dark cloud and you have not felt any joy in a very long time. Holy Spirit is filling your heart with peace and with joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. He's filling you with joy right now. You are starting to laugh on the inside. After a very long time, you have been under a burden and under such a hard yoke but the Lord is taking that away and is filling your heart with joy he's flooding your heart with light receive it now in the name of Jesus personal revival right now individual revival right now on the inside of your soul receiving a peace like never before in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, do what only you can do. Do what only you can do, Lord. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks, Lord. Dry the tears of your children. Lord, as I've been crying, Lord, dry those tears. Fill it with joy. Fill us with joy now. Fill us with joy right now. Come on, let's continue to worship Him right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just one more prayer item regarding Holy Spirit. You see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 11, Paul, the apostle, talks about spiritual gifts. The gifts that come from Holy Spirit. And this is what he says. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. In other words, it is for the good of everybody. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines just as he determines just as he determines and he is in this place and he will determine now these gifts are for service and so I'd like for us to believe God for these gifts in two areas one for your personal walk with Christ so that you will be edified and strengthened the other is for witness because 
in order for some people to receive this message of the gospel, the Lord has to work through these giftings in our lives. For some of you to be in your family, there are members of your family that haven't had or have refused to receive the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now the Lord will empower you to be able to use these giftings so that they will turn their hearts to Christ. For some of you, it's in your places of work because you need wisdom. You need a clear word from God. Sometimes it requires a miraculous work. And so can we ask God for these giftings right now, for these gifts, that the Lord will use them in our lives for service wherever you are. Let's just ask Him and let us receive them from Him right now in the name of Jesus. Let's just raise those hands to God right now. It's wherever you are. Just lift those hands to God. And our Father, with our hands raised to you in this moment, a sign of surrender. Holy Spirit, we ask you, pour out to each one of us as you determine these different giftings. Lord, we know that these gifts are given to us for service. To serve you, O Lord, to be witnesses to those that have not received the message of the gospel in our different areas of influence. Lord, we're praying that these gifts would be used in us to touch our family members. Lord, we're praying that these gifts would be used in us at our places of work, Lord, in our neighborhoods, Lord God. Lord, wherever we go, that everywhere we go, we shall be your witnesses, Lord, and that these gifts will be used to bring you glory and to bring you honor. Especially to this world, oh God, that is full of darkness, where everyone is going astray, oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus that these gifts will be used in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus. And so Lord, may you pour them out. Pour them out on us. Lord, for us as members of this beautiful family, Watoto Church, so that there'll be healing in the cities and the nations, in the marketplace, oh God, in the name of Jesus, all for the glory and the honor of your name. Pour them out on us, oh God. Pour them on us. Lord, we are ready to receive. Our hearts are open to you, oh God. Pour them out on us. And Lord, by faith, we receive. We receive them right now. By faith. We know that you're doing it right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We receive them by faith. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In our as we are
we were singing that song, um, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. And Pastor Remy came and led us in prayer and um, uh, declared freedom, declared uh, release and del deliverance. This scripture came, you know, the Holy Spirit dropped this scripture in my heart. It's in Matthew chapter 12, verse 29, and Jesus was, was having a conversation with the Pharisees who were calling him a, a demon-possessed man. But he said to them, Oh, again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties, ties up the strong man? Then he can plunder his house. The strong man is Satan. But it's not stronger than the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It takes a stronger man to tie up the strong man. Jesus is the one who is stronger. And there's no way you can be a fruitful Christian. You can be effective Christian. There's no way you can become who God wants you to become unless you are set free. Some of you are bound in some things. You are bound in drugs. Tonight is the night that the stronger one, Jesus, sets you free. Even you are online. If you are bound in drugs, tonight I declare with the authority of Jesus, you are set free. You are set free. So right now, raise your hand. You, you need freedom. Do you need freedom from something specific in which you are held in bondage? If it is sexual immorality, tonight you are receiving your freedom because there is one who is stronger. If it is alcoholism, you are bound in. You cannot get rid of drinking alcohol. A drunkenness, drunkenness, tonight is your night to be free. In the name of Jesus, I pronounce you free. I declare you free. You are free because whoever, Jesus, the Son of God, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the one with all authority sets free, is free indeed. Receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. Spirit of sexual immorality, get out of that young man's life. Get out of that young man's life. Spirit of pornography and masturbation, get out of that young man's life, that young woman's life. Get out. Spirit of homosexuality, we bind you right now. Spirit of lesbianism, in the name of Jesus, get out of that girl's life. Leave that girl in the name of Jesus. We break the covenant that has been established between that young woman and another lesbian woman. In the name of Jesus, we break that covenant. And we break the covenant of witchcraft. In your family, let there be freedom and instead of witchcraft, may the altar of worship be set up. Worship to God. We break, we pull down the altar like Gideon did it. Gideon pulled down the altars dedicated to false gods, idols in his family. He pulled them down. We pull down those idols tonight in your family and we break generational curses you will not continue carrying you will not carry those curses in your life you will not carry them into your future you will not carry them into your family you will not carry them into your career there is no way they are going to follow you no curse will follow you I declare no curse no curse, no curse, no curse will follow you. Instead, the goodness of God will follow you. The mercy of God, the favor of God, the 
kindness of God, no curse, no curse of poverty will follow you in the name of Jesus. No curse of backsliding will follow you. So receive your freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. There is power, and there is power in the name, power in the name, there is power in the name, the name of Jesus, there is power in the name, power in the name, there is power in the name, the name Come on, of Jesus. There is power. There is power in the name. Power in the name. There is power in the name. The name. There is power. There is power in the name. Power in the name. There is power in the name. The name. There is healing. There is healing. And I believe 
we praise you that your name is high above any other name and in that name miracles will happen Lord we have come this evening to believe in the impossible that only you can do and Lord we just want to raise our hearts our voices to your God this evening oh God and say Lord in your name let miracles happen tonight Lord, I pray that the revival shall happen in our personal lives, in our families, in our place of work. Lord, let miracles happen in the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we just want to praise you. We worship you. We adore you because we believe that great and mighty things are going to happen in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, you deserve all our praise. You deserve all our worship. Why don't we give Jesus a very big hand clap of praise because in his name, miracles will happen. Oh, Jesus, Lord, we just worship you. We, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, your, your word says, oh God, everything is possible for whoever believes in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, everything is possible. And Lord, that's where we find our confidence. That's where we find our hope. That's where we find our joy, our peace, knowing that that name is greater than any other name. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. Man is so powerful to just end that song that way. In the name of Jesus, reminding us of the power that is not just without, but the power that is within. That power. The resurrection power of Christ that lives right within us. In the name of Jesus, there is nothing that is impossible in his name. You know, friends, today when I walk around the streets of Kampala, when I watch the news, when I hear conversations from different people, you find a sense of like worry, uncertainty. Many things are happening. And all the worry and uncertainty is based on the unmet needs that we pray for every day. What we shall eat, what we shall wear. Guys, I am tired. I don't know, but if there's somebody who is broke in this place, you must say, I'm, I'm tired of being broke. 
I am tired of the debts that have weighed me down. I am tired of disease and sickness. I am tired of failure. I am tired of fear. All those things in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, miracles can happen. In the least expected ways, Jesus will surely come through for you and for me. But you need to get to that place where you tell Jesus, I am tired. You are, all, you, you are my only source. You are my only hope. And in you, I put my trust in you. And I'm believing for the impossible. This is what Matthew chapter 6 says. Please, if you can throw it. It says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Can you imagine? Don't worry about what? Your life. What you will eat. Every day this is what we are toiling for. You ask a student at university, what is your plan? They say, man, I am cracking my books in order that I may have something on the table. What you will eat or drink or about your body. This one says, and what you will wear. Is not life more than food? And the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in bands. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Just wait a minute there. At home I have some bit of poetry. I may be speaking like I have many birds at home. I just have only two, a cock, <laughs> a hen, and one chick. I locked them up for three days in the house. No food, no water. On the third day, I opened for them. Do you know what I saw these things do? They just went and they began to peck the ground. They were eating something. In my mind, I was totally confused. What are they doing? They were just picking the ground. And then I see them every day just growing and becoming bigger. And I'm thinking, man, this must be a miracle. A miracle. You guess what? My father. My father feeds them. My father feeds them. My father feeds them. And says, are you not much more valuable than by those chickens? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? By the way, when you worry, you're deducting. Your, your, your years are reducing automatically by the day. And then he says... And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet, I tell you, that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is near here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more? clothe you. And says, my friend, you of little faith. So do not worry. Saying, what shall I, what shall we eat? Family members, dads and moms, yeah. What, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all the things Tell your neighbor you're not a pagan. Tell your neighbor you're not a pagan. Yes. For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. Before even you ask, he already knows. He knows and says, but, now this is where the game changer is. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. 
Each day has enough trouble of its own. That is the word of the Lord. In this revival week, the pagans run after all those things. But you are not a pagan. You are a child of God. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood set apart for his purposes. I tell you something. You are chosen. You are special. You are a son. You are a daughter of God. You are not a pagan. You crossed over. You crossed over. But when I read the scripture here, I think that is where many of us find ourselves. We find that our priorities are in the wrong places. We worry about all the things. We have put all the things first before seeking the kingdom of God. I just want us to take a few minutes, few minutes, and just have a time. If you know that you've been in that place, that you've got your priorities wrong, instead of all these things being added unto you, they have become number one. You're chasing after them. And you're forsaken. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. So why don't you just take a time to just, to just repent and tell God, I am sorry for where I've made you too small in my eyes. And I've taken things upon my own self. I just repent of all this. I choose this day to seek your kingdom. To seek your kingdom. To seek your righteousness. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we come before you in repentance. Lord, your word says that your thoughts are not our thoughts and your ways are not our ways. Father, we can attest to many miracles that you did in the past, to many that you have done today and to many that you're yet to do. Father, you are able to feed the children of Israel in the desert. Even when they grumbled, you are still faithful to provide to them. Father, you were able to heal in the past. Lord, we have seen you heal today. 
And yet Jesus, with all these things, the clouds of witnesses round and about us that confirm that you are ever present God in our time of need, we have still turned our backs on you. But Lord, this day we come before you as we believe for a revival in our hearts, in our lives. Holy Spirit, we ask you in the mighty name of Jesus that Lord, you may help us to realign, to refocus. Lord, that we may be so passionate about seeking the kingdom of God. Lord, in our daily decisions. Lord, in our family affairs. Lord, in our places of work. Lord, you have said in your words in Proverbs 3.5 that we should choose to lean not on our understanding. But in all our ways, oh Jesus, oh God, we, we, we need to acknowledge you. We need to trust you. And you said that you shall direct our path, oh Lord. Father, we just come before you. We are praying and saying, Jesus, where we have made you too small in our eyes, we are asking you to forgive us. Where we have relied on our experiences, oh God. Lord, where we have relied on what we have. Lord, where we have relied on the connections that we have. Father, we are praying in the mighty name of Jesus this day that, Lord, may you have mercy on us, oh God. May you have mercy on us, oh God. Where the things of God or earthly things that the pagans worry about have become priority in our hearts and yet to glory the kingdom of God is meant to be number one in our lives. Father, we just want to pray and say, Jesus, this evening may you have mercy on us. Help us, oh God, to reprioritize. Help us, oh God, to get our priorities right in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we just want to depend on you, even as we trust in you this evening, Holy Spirit, to meet us at our point of need. Father, we just want to give you glory. We want to give you honor because you are faithful, God. We bless you, Jesus. This is what the scripture says. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added unto you. We need to put our faith in Jesus to meet our needs. To meet our needs on a daily basis. And this is the reason why. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 to 13, this is what the scripture says. Therefore, my dear brothers, friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more even in my absence. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his, his good purpose. Friends, God knows what we all need. God knows what we all need. And we need to depend on him to do that. So right now, I just want us to take time and express all these other needs to him. What need did you come with today? Just express it to him. You may be online, just express that need to your father in heaven right now. I am sure that he's ready to add all this unto you. Let us just take time and pray over that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whether it is too small or too big, just express it to him. Express that need to him right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you're faithful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Whatever it is, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 
Miracles have to happen. And you're going to testify of his goodness. You're going to, to testify and say his hand was not too short to save. And his ear was not too heavy to hear your cry. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. Lord, we honor you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just want you to turn to your friend who is next to you. Just share one need with them that you have come with today. And please, can you just pray for each other? Just share that one need. One need. One. One like this. One. 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 And be specific about it. Okay? Be specific about it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, a good God. Thank you, a faithful God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're a good God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want us to end this way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want to end this way. You're here. You're online. You've been looking for jobs. You've been looking for jobs. I just want you to come to the front. And let these pastors pray for you. This day, they are going to work because he strengthens our hands to make wealth. So you're here and you've been looking for a job. Please come. Please come to the front. You're here. It's a revival week. Just come to the front and our pastors are going to pray for you. Pray for you. Pray for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.
caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessing. Jesus, you don't owe me. Just gone through the motions. I'm sorry. When am I just sang another song? Take me back to where it started. I open up my heart to you. I'm sorry. When I've come. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do.
Jesus still ain't again. Oh, we believe, we believe for the supernatural. We believe for a miracle. Thank you, Lord. We are hungry for revival. Here in this place, Jesus. impossible for you God. nothing is impossible nothing is impossible for you God
Come on, just lift his name higher than that circumstance, that situation. Higher than disease. Higher than disease. Higher than depression. Higher than bondage, higher than bondage. were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way sing you you made a Give him praise right there. Give him praise. Lord, this evening we, we give you praise because you're a God who not only hears prayer, you are a God who answers prayer. And so we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the gifts of the Spirit. We thank you for healings, for deliverances, for open doors with your favor, for victories in every battle. We thank you for the things that you have done. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Come on, will you shout amen right there? Amen, amen, amen. Wow. Amen. The pastors are going to continue to be available um, as even we're planning now to come to the end. Um, but we're going to give together. And so I want to encourage you uh, to, to, to be seated for a moment. And uh, possibly we still have some friends who needed prayer here in person. Um, uh, we're going to give. And then after that, we will close our time together. And there will be an opportunity for you to still come and pray with somebody um, but for a moment, we may be seated right now. Wow, what a time in God's presence, amen. God is so faithful. We're getting ready to give. And uh, thank you. you're reviving us. You're building us up again. You're bringing fresh strength and you're bringing grace. And we want to thank you for that. And so we give an offering. It is a free will thanksgiving offering. And as is our culture, the blue bags that the host ashes have right now, that's where we put our tithes and offerings. And there's an envelope for you. 
And the red bag is where we give to build God's house. We love planting campuses. We're church planters. We want to grow and multiply, but we want to reach more people with the gospel. We want to encourage you to be generous as well. There's an envelope for you. And our hostages, our hostages are going to be waiting on us. If you need details on non-cash options to give here in person, please reach out to one of our hostages. They have a little card. We will break it down for you. Mobile money and the rest. So they're able to participate in this moment and give. For our church family that are joining us online, our hosts have the information and they're going to be putting it in the chat section so as you get ready to give, just look out for the details. They're going to be coming up, but they'll also give you the website in case you want to give after this. Um, you can just visit our website. The details are there for you to give. Your generosity matters. Our generosity counts. It makes a difference as we preach the gospel. Um, but I also want to remind you, we're still giving towards Easter in prison. In fact, this week, the team from Power FM is going to be going out to Ginger. And uh, I want to encourage you to be generous to the work of Eastern Prison. It is we as Watoto sending Power FM go out to Ginger and reach these people on our behalf. Here's what we're going to do right now. As we get ready to give, um, um, we're just going to watch a real, it's like a two quick minute video really quick i was just going to share with you stories of transformation this is what our giving does when we send power fm to the prisons and after that the worship team will come we'll sing a song and then we'll come and crown our evening together let's watch this testimony together Pasco Kakuru, Mania Gang and Pitiwa Namakula Mariam, Sasso Machua, Nasoma Pocatono, Vampita Babula and Nasimba, Nimchala Mulimi, Catevana Sivana Limchala Mufumbo, Pansiva Biri Moenda. I have a background in the, in the military, and during the course of our work, uh, somebody died actually and I was held responsible. Arrested, charged, committed to prison, and sentenced to suffer death in 2007. <laughs> Nsigalayonze <laughs> Christmas, there was a Vera Wanga to in a suvi. Colonel Kupa FM way at Jan Twasanuka, the Twali of Runji, the Tunua Netuwe taba mizanyo, wabela yo kubuka, wabela yo kubaka, wabela yo kuyimba, wabela yo uli mizanyo jona. During those moments of Easter in prison, words of hope and power FM and watoto, the words of great encouragement, especially the word of God, and speaking about hope, speaking about God's forgiveness, God's freedom to give somebody comfort. It will give me joy and comfort. And it came to pass, finally I was out of prison. And I give thanks to the Lord. Join Power 104.1 FM in spreading hope and love to the 3,300 inmates of Chirinya Prison Complex in Jinja this Easter. Give generously towards Easter in Prison 2024 by sending your contribution of 40,000 Uganda shillings or more to 0753-104-104 or 0776-106-104. Contributions in kind 
including sanitary towels, bar soap, and toilet paper. Bring them to the Power FM offices at Watoto downtown.
Wonderful. Come on, give the worship team, the choir, big clap. Thank you for leading us today. Thank you so much. Wow, so appreciate the team that has served us today here in person and online. Come and give them a big clap. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for plugging in tonight as we have called on the name of Jesus. He is an on-time God. And He loves doing miracles. He loves to turn around impossible situations. And my prayer is that your faith in the Lord and your walk with the Lord will be stirred up. I'm praying that it will be a revival and it will be a fire that will not just stay with you, but it will catch like a wildfire. Wherever you go, people will begin to fall in love with Jesus because they are seeing what he's doing in your life. And so that's our prayer as your pastors. We're believing God that throughout this week, God will just set you on fire once again that you will be hot for Jesus. That's what we are praying. I want to thank you so much for being here today. We're coming to the end, but just want to remind you, tomorrow we are in our cell families. If you're not part of a cell family, it's so easy to join one. Um, you can talk to the team here either during the day, write to us, sell at Watoto. Team will serve if you're online. Links are already showing up. Join a cell family and let us keep this fire burning as we do life together. Um, we'll be in our cells tomorrow and it will be a time of prayer and communion in cell. So really looking forward to that. And then Thursday, we are back here for a praise rally all the way from 6.30 to 9.30. And not just here, but also at Luvoa, at Boyogere and in Tinda as well. So make sure that you plan to be there. Come early because people usually come so early. So you want to make sure that you're the first year. Grab yourself a good seat. Uh, it's going to be an awesome time. Then Friday at 10 a.m., Good Friday services. One service 10 a.m. in all our celebration campuses, so make sure you're part of that. And then on the weekend, our Easter services. Now, we know that there are people who are CEOs. They come to church Christmas and Easter only. And so we want to encourage you to leverage this season and invite your CEO to church. In fact, invite them to your cell tomorrow and then invite them to church because they are so important. They are V-V-V-I-P-C-E-O. So make sure that you do that. And we're trusting God that through our invitations, we're going to see so many people give their hearts to Jesus. Amen. Really looking forward to it. It's going to be a great week. Come and rise up to your feet. We're going to close together. We're going to close together. Our church family online, again, thank you so much for joining in. Here in person, let's share the words of the grace. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Enjoy your time in cell tomorrow.